What's up, Dragon Brood? So today we're gonna talk about the idea of something being rotation proof. I, I tend to have a little bit of an issue with the term because one of the problems is that we could make a deck that ultimately becomes invalidated because the new set comes out. You know, let's say in this case, with Zendikar Rising coming out, there's a good chance that with those 250 plus cards that maybe the thing we decide to make pre-rotation because it's theoretically rotation proof ends up not being nearly as good. So we have to build with that in mind and just be a little careful. And sometimes there's really nothing you can do to avoid the other outcome that you don't really want. So I say anything you see with the term rotation proof, take it with a grain of salt. Now, that being said, <laughs> we do have this deck that doesn't have any cards rotating except for the lands, because we're still playing the shock lands, which are gonna rotate out in the fall. However, the rest of the deck is actually still viable, and it takes big, big use of the mutation mechanic. So if you already own a lot of those cards, you'll be able to build this deck or build toward it and know that you can at least still play it in standard for months, almost a year to come. So you shouldn't have anything to worry about. But before we get into that, remember to please like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and then we'll go take a look at this Teamer Mutate deck. Okay, so again, I just want to preface this with, though these cards are all standard legal, still, come October, the deck isn't necessarily guaranteed to keep its same power level. Now, that being said, it might actually be stronger come rotation. Who knows? Just know that when you build it, that's just part of the risk that you take. Okay, so, the biggest thing about this deck that makes it very interesting is because when you have a mutate stack of creatures, sometimes you have trouble protecting it because one removal card can kill two or three cards at once. This actually gives you the ability because you have stuff like Ranger's Guile that actually gives you the ability to give something hexproof if it's targeted. You also have Heroic Intervention which can just give something indestructible and hexproof if somebody tries to, say, shatter this guy. Now, the other side of that is it doesn't protect you from things like Extinction Event because those are just exile effects. So you still have to be careful, spread your creatures around, be aware of your casting costs so you don't lose everything at once. And then while I have a second, I also want to say that this deck was actually inspired by another YouTube channel called Hello Good Games. His was actually not just rotation proof, but also a budget build. So if you want to see that, check out their channel, give them a look want to make sure I just threw that in there before we finish talking about the deck list. So we have the Polywog Symbiote, which actually makes it cheaper to play your Mutate creatures. SN Symbiote gives you life and counters, which is amazing. Uh, Lord Dracus. Now, now this is the reason that we're only playing one red card, mind you, but this is the reason we're playing it. Because Lord Dracus being able to get back a Ranger's Guile or get back a Heroic Intervention makes it even harder for your opponents to kill your creatures. They can't just like play their big thing this turn, miss, and then try another one next turn. Like, this lets you keep mana up and keep protecting your creatures while you're doing everything else that you're doing. Gym Razor, we all know by now this card's a good card. Migratory Great Horn, it's a cheap way to get... It's Well, it's three, but it's a cheap way to get another Mutate thing out there, get it started, get the lands out of your deck and get moving. Pouncing Shore Shark, it has Flash. You can bounce something your opponent's hand to keep creatures out of the way. Then Auspicious Derex would just let you get everything else onto the table. Lands were playing 3 Island, 1 Mountain, 7 Forest, 3 Steam Vents, 3 Stomping Ground, 4 Breeding Pools, and 3 Fabled Passage. Uh, and once again, I, like I said, I want to make sure credit goes to Hello Good Games just with the initial idea of inspiring this deck. Uh, and this is kind of one of those ideas, right, where something being a budget build actually spawned another idea. Now... Is it good enough to battle other decks? I don't know. We'll try it in the play queue, and then we may play a couple in the uh, latter best of ones, just to kind of get a look at both sides of it. But anyway, let's take this into the arena, see how it does. Uh, sadly, this we have to mulligan. We don't have anything really to play early or anything to do here, so uh, I think this has to go. Kind of sad. This is much better, so we'll keep this. Uh, Lord Rakus probably, well, hmm, hold that thought. Does Lord Rakus go away? 
Yeah, probably. Probably. I also dig my opponent's name, Ice Sushi. That seems like a cool name to have for any type of uh, digital gaming. Alright, so here we obviously have to go get a island so we can play our Polywog. Oh, Drown Secrets. That's actually bad for us if we get, like, Sterix and stuff going. This is going to be a problem. I mean, I guess taking damage doesn't care matter against this deck. Alright, here comes the first way to mill things. Don't think we beat a mill deck at all. Yeah. What are they even... So they're milling themselves to try to play Arclight Phoenix? This... This was unexpected. Um, okay then. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's a way we're going to win this, everybody. I'm going to try my damnedest, but uh, I think we're up against it here. And not in a good way. Alright, they got two Arclight Phoenixes in the yard. If we don't even draw, like, a Gem Razor, we're, we're toast. All right, they're just straight up playing a Narc Amoeba. Got another one. Uh, I mean, I'm thinking about, do we just play this and then play a Great Horn? I mean, the problem is we just end up milling ourselves faster to help the opponent out. I don't know if that's what we should be doing. Um... But at some point, I mean, we just try to wait, race, right? I mean, I can't imagine we're doing anything else. Okay, Shore Shark might be important. Let's toss this mountain. Okay, that that actually helps. So, let's see. Shore Shark's going to be down to costing two. This is going to cost two. No, it actually costs three. Oh, no, no, but the mutate, actually. Oh, so this only costs two green. This would cost two. Uh, so the Great Horn probably goes. I think our plan's based around other things at this point. Uh, we will get an island in case we just get a second Shore Shark or something. All right, the opponent's already blocking, so... I think that makes sense for them, because... If they're trying to mill us, like, their life is just keep their life where they can. Okay, well, guess they didn't think they were going to be able to take us. All right, I'm willing to mulligan this once since we're on the draw. That helps. So we'll keep this. Let's get rid of... Oh, boy. This is actually harder than I thought. I'm going to get rid of Great Horn... All right, uh, that's probably wrong, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Mostly on the idea that if we can play Poliwag, or the we can play the Gym Razor for two and still protect it with the Ranger Skyle, we wouldn't be able to play both at any point. Uh, but again, you know, drawing the Sterix kind of adds to that, right? If we kept the Great Horn, then it's possible. We're able to get more mana to play this out instead. So like I said, it could have been the wrong choice. I was just going for a bigger creature looking at our hand. And knowing that we could at least protect a 4-4. Somewhat. Depending on what the opponent has here, though. Who knows? Uh-oh. This isn't good. Auger of Bolas. I haven't seen anybody play one of those in a while. Oh, that's cool. It makes a little Bolas symbol on top. That's sweet. Uh, this, however, has become unfortunate as we don't really want to let the Poliwog die because that's real bad for us. So I'm just going to pass. Oh, here. I thought here comes a Narset. That's what I thought they were going to do. Alright, so I'm getting extra life is a problem. 
but not the worst thing in the world. Alright, so we're going to play the Polywog and see if we can protect it. I mean, these don't do anything. They do have to find actual black mana. I mean, they do things, just not for casting non-planeswalkers. Well, there's their black mana. Now we're just going to have to hope they don't have a spell counter. Though, that being said, we can actually just cast things now, so it becomes kind of a bit different. Oh, we're going to Thought Erasure? Man. Ah, oh, that sucks. That sucks, that sucks, that sucks. So we can't... Man, oh, that's so bad. So we're kind of inclined to use the Ranger's Guile here. So they can't kill our Polywog. But like, ah, uh, I don't even know if we care. If it dies, we just play the Gem Razor, I guess. Problem is, they can make us discard Gem Razor and then kill the Polywog, and that's doubly bad. So, like, yeah. Alright. I hate that play, honestly. But it's kind of what we're backed into. The only thing we can hope for is to draw another thing we can mutate for like two or something okay they got rid of sterix which actually is okay for us nature flows with vigor Okay, that's a nice little pickup. We can do this for two. Now here's the interesting thing. Do we even care that the Polywog is dying? Like, we still get our 4-4. So I say we just let it ride. and We just protect the... Well... Hmm. We could let it ride and then protect the Gym Razor, which is probably better. So, like, yeah, it just resolves. That's fine. Uh, we will discard a land, because we may be all in on protecting this Gym Razor. I mean, if we draw a Lord Dracus, we won't be able to cast it, but we have two things, so it's fine. Alright, Ashiok, you do your thing. Alright. Hmm. So we can turn this into a 5-5. Five five. Going after the Planeswalkers. Alright. Get some mana out of here. Put it under. Get a mountain. Interesting. Didn't want to give that other creature up. Oh, I think they're trying to make two of them and then kill our Gym Razor next turn. I think is what they're aiming for. That kind of makes sense. That's actually bad because now you can make several of them. I mean, you, for six, we can't take down six. So we could use Heroic Intervention. Well, I say that. We could actually... Uh, let's see... It's possible we could mutate, kill a solemn simulacrum. The ocean surges, life thrives. Well, that's cute, but we need more creatures, deck. We need creatures. That doesn't help our cause any. All right, got to try to do what we can to get it, Ashiok. Hmm. 
I guess here we just do this. Since we'll get plus one, plus one. Alright, come on, deck. We need something. Actually, a pouncing shore shark would be great too next turn, even. Get us a land, bounce one of the blockers, kind of get us back where we want to go. That'd be awesome. Given for. Come on. Oh, dang. That's terrible. Alright, well, we're just gonna have to give this one up, unfortunately. Oh boy, we'll keep this, but we definitely need to draw a land, or this is gonna hurt a lot. Oh boy. I feel like we're gonna need some big things in the way to win this. Actually, you know what we're going to need? Pouncing Shore Shark is probably going to be the card we live or die with uh, this game. If we're being honest, I think that's the way we're going to win or lose. Uh, however, hmm, Jim Razor to kill a Daxos is pretty good. Because even if they have a Heliot or something here, you kill two Devotion, which is pretty nice. Uh, no blocks. We do have to watch the opponent's life with that Speaker of the Heavens, though. And a Hollow Blade. Okay, the good news is, when we mutate here, it'll actually get bigger. So, let's do that. Because the mana is going to be pretty important here when we're staring at, like, Sterics and stuff in hand. Put that over. We're gonna gain some life. Gotta get a plus one, plus one. We're gonna need. We have two blue, two red, two green. I guess we have everything we need. All right. And then I think we're going to attack with the four five here. I mean, if they have some crafty thing to give stuff a bonus, and they want to discard a card to the hollow blade, so be it. I'll take my beaten. I'll take my deserved beating. Alright, so they discarded another Hollow Blade. Reasonable. Alright, we're gonna take six. Put this at nine. We're okay though, because we do have some life gain on the table. Cavalcade. Excellent, excellent. And see, the interesting thing is we get two creatures back, which is pretty funny here. So, we don't want to tap that way, Auto Tapper. Look at you. So naughty. And then we're going to go ahead and Gem Razor. And initially, like I said, I was going to... I uh, don't think we need another Polywog. Was going to kill Daxos, but... Now we can kill a Conclave Tribunal and get a whole bunch of stuff back. And that works better. And now, if we can get another land, we're in a situation where we could play a Great Horn, get two lands, we could Lord Rakus to get something, and then really get after it. And, hopefully, we can pump our creatures big enough to outpace a Pride Mate. Is what our goal is going to be here. Though, now we can start talking about some Sterix action. So if we Sterix, we'll get to kill this, get two things. Yeah, I think that's what we do. We'll gain two life, we'll get a counter. There's a lot going on here. Oh, there's a Shore Shark. We gotta keep that. 
Uh, I'm going to say Great Horn. Because now that we have Lord Dracus and this, like, things start moving pretty quickly here. So Great Horn's got to go, I think. Definitely going over. Get our life, get a counter. Kill Daxos. Uh, put that in tapped. Get a Lord Dracus in. Uh, I think we're in the mood to attack with the 7-7. Seven, seven. I mean, you can trade your team and just end up with a Hollow Blade. We are okay with that. All right, they didn't want to. Yeah, because they'd have done that with the rest of our hand. We'd have basically been able to keep them off creatures and then just keep attacking. Yep, Luris doesn't do much of anything for them here. We have a land. We're probably going to keep that in hand because we can just discard it if we need to. Nothing in the yard to get back with the Dracus. So what we should probably be doing here is bounce Luris. Because that makes most sense. And we're probably... Well, I was going to say we're going to split these around, but I'm not really going to. Just makes sense. The opponent's got nothing to do here. And we have a Ranger's Guile to protect it, so... And we got double Ranger's Guide to protect it. Uh, not if we get rid of the mana we need. Going under for sure. Giving us with a gigantic 8 8. We're going to bounce this. Oh, now we're going to get a bunch of life encounters whenever we mutate. So now we have to start spreading these around. Yep, that, that's it. I think this is a mulligan situation. Alright, we'll keep this. Uh, not particularly what we're looking for, but uh, actually it's fine. It's fine, actually. I mean, we gotta put a card back, so might as well put back one of the ranger's guiles. Even if it was a creature, it really wouldn't change things too much here. Uh, here the interesting thing is we're probably against Winota from the looks of things, so we were probably looking for a bouncing shore shark here. Though there have been a few, believe it or not, feather decks running around, so... Oh, this is completely different. Neat. Alright, we're gonna go with this, see if maybe we can get a gem razor early and block this flyer. And it'd be a gem razor we could protect, which is nice. Oh, yep, yeah, this is very likely of a Nota situation. Not good. Not good. I was kind of hoping we might get lucky and get a Shore Shark there, but uh, no such luck. Nope, nope, de nope. Hmm. I don't think there's any way we can win this one if they have a Winota. I think we're just dead. If we had a Shore Shark, we could do some stuff, but we don't. Alright, we're going to Mulligan up. And that's a little better. We can get rid of one of these heroic interventions. And then we'll see what happens. My opponent just has a Temple Garden. Go ahead and put this in tapped. Another tap temple garden. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Go ahead and play this. Alright, opponent. You went land, land, but didn't play anything. 
Maybe we get lucky and I'll play like a 3-3 three, three, uh, Stone Cold Serpent or some such. Nope, no luck. Hmm. Hey, there's a 2-2 two -two Stone Cold Serpent. Almost the same as we requested. I think though we're gonna do this. Uh, discard. Probably that. And we'll attack before. I think the opponent was just setting up something to make a bunch of plus one plus ones. I think is what's going on here. Oh no, we're gonna get primal minded. Okay, that that could have been lots worse, actually. <laughs> could have been significantly worse. It was not. Okay, how do we want to protect ourselves here? Because we could symbiote, then put a gym razor on the symbiote. Hmm. Well, I guess technically we have two symbiotes. Uh, essence symbiote is what I was referring to here. Um. I feel like do that and then gym razor. don't feel like we desperately need the land at this point, but maybe. No attacks. The good news is both creatures that are under these have abilities that we get no matter when we mutate. It doesn't have to be on the creature itself. So that helps a lot. Now we don't feel as bad if they have something like a Primal Might or whatever. Alright, Bracious Hydra, but it wasn't big enough to fight anything. Just becomes a 6-7. I say just a 6-7, but that's still relevant. Unfortunately, once they put something that doubles the counters or whatever, we're just going to get wrecked. Don't have much choice, though. We kind of just got to let it go. Man, we desperately need something big. We, we need a... Asterix. We need... Shore Shark. You know, something that's going to let us just punch through here and, and start doing some battle. Honestly, we'd probably prefer Shore Shark because then we could at least protect our creatures. We can't necessarily do that with Asterix. We don't have quite enough mana. All right, Bajor Lieutenant lets something attack and gives it indestructible or whatever. Uh, yeah, makes sense. Now is the time to strike. All right, uh, no blocks. We're gonna try to get there. Come on, Dak. Come on. Ugh, why do we draw so many lands? Yeah, now we're just in trouble. Because now I think they can just... I mean... Well, we'll just have to blow this heroic intervention. There's not a lot we can do. That's unfortunate. But yeah, basically, I mean, give the lieutenant plus one plus one. Attack with the lieutenant and the hydra. Or even just attack with everything. Alright. Make the collector bigger. I mean, even then, though, if they activate Bosri's second ability and then just attack with everything, that's still pretty good for them, because we're only at 10. 
I mean, we're, we're dead, right? Because that gives you... Whenever one or more token creatures attack, create that many soldiers that are tapped and attacking. Yeah, literally, if the opponent would have just done that, we die. Because we would have had to block, block, take trample damage. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we're necessarily going to win from here, but... I mean, we're now in a situation where if we were to, like, shore shark, draw a shore shark, like, some weird things could happen. Uh, oh, that wouldn't have been active. Never mind. Well, even then, though, same situation. We'd have had three more creatures coming through. Five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I mean, I guess we just block the most we can block. Actually, that has trample, too, so that doesn't even help. Oh, we're just going to die. Yeah, we almost need to draw a double Shore Shark. Or nothing. <laughs> yeah, we're still going to take 6, 7. Yeah, even double Shore Shark doesn't help us, though, because Basri's other ability just kills us. We're at 3. Well, if we can bounce, bounce, but then that lets them fight something. Yeah, literally, that's our, that's our only option. Okay, we got one. That would let us destroy an artifact. That lets us gain two life. Alright, I mean, we'll, we'll do what we can do here. Sterix. Yo, you are one... Oh, no, no, no. That is not what we needed. Not what we needed. I mean, is there any way we live here? I don't think there is. Uh, remember this creature mutates return target creature. Um, I guess this. Wait, why didn't we get to destroy? Oh, that's not an artifact. It's just colorless. Oh, never mind. Yeah, we're dead. <laughs> Plus, they have tramplers. Yeah, dang. Okay, we will keep this. We're riding on a lot of the symbiote living, but it's kind of all we got, so we got to go with it. Alright. Blue, green. I guess the good news is, unless they bounce this, they're not likely to have a lot of ways to kill it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this down, just in case we need this later. Alright, so hopefully we'll at least get one use of the Great Horn. Then get to put a land, have a 4-5 creature... Oh boy, opponent's doing some ramping of their own over there, though. Hmm. Just take another forest for now. Could need that extra mana to heroic intervention. Ranger's Guile. Alright, they ended up not doing anything. Alright, we're going to keep and hopefully draw some land to go with this polywog here. Because if not, I'm not sure what we're going to do. Alright, there's a goblin banneret. That is a problem. Alright, I guess we just pass. It's possible we can get lucky the opponent pumps to try to kill our polywog. Then we, I don't know, maybe we ranger dial. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of random, but sure. All right, that helps 
a bit. Uh, I kind of want to make this a four toughness. That seems smarter. We'll discard one of these Lord Dracus. Man, I know we can take four here. Maybe even six if they have another Tajik, but I'm willing to take it. Strikes as mentor. Hmm. I think we may just be holding out on just playing a shore shark here. Let's see what the opponent's up to. Plus, keeping this heroic intervention up doesn't hurt. Yep, for stuff like that. Alright, another stalwart. I'm going to attack with the banneret and pump. They chose not to. Alright, we're just going to pass. Opponent doesn't have a removal card at this point unless they just draw one for the gym raiser, but we do have heroic intervention. I considered playing the polywog, but don't think it would get enough for us. Uh, let's see. Whenever we're at attacks, target attacking creature without flying gains flying. Okay, that's going to be a little annoying, but we do have a gym raiser. So it's not the end of the world. We'll pass. You want? Okay, now I think we just start trying to find ways to get the opponent to spend mana. So let's go ahead and Shore Shark. That mana could be important. And we're at the point where we can start Lord Dracus to reuse a heroic intervention so we can get that back if we discard it. So sure. I mean, these first strike, this pumps itself. So let's just get rid of that. Well, that's nifty. We do like that. Hmm. Let's pay two. I mean, if we're going to go for it, let's go for it, right? Or do we just wait? Let's attack. See if the opponent... Well, opponent would just double block there. That doesn't do anything, right? I mean, they may not. Okay, they're just taking four. I'm going to go ahead and do this now. We'll discard that. We'll discard that. Put that under. We'll bounce these two. Oh, how can I target? know which one I targeted already? Okay, so that's saying that one's already targeted. Got it. Got it. Alright, that makes sense. Now, unless they have a way to kill the Gym Razor right now, we should be in good shape. Because now we can Lord Rakus pick this up if we need to discard whatever the other things are that we draw. And a banner that makes sense. Sure, take our two. Great horn. Nifty. Don't hate that. Uh, let's Lord Dracus, though. Uh, 
mean, because at this point, we're mostly just looking for sterics, right? I will put, I guess, Ranger's Guile back in hand. Because if we get Sterex, it'll be one, two, three, four. So yeah, we'd really be able to still be able to use that. Target creature, that. Again, that one's already being targeted. So let's target this one. Yeah, we're gonna do it. I mean, it just seems silly not to. Yeah, just keep the opponent off creatures. All right, we kept this one. Uh, let's see, we're up against something that's a slower deck, which is probably bad for us, but let's see what happens. I'm gonna play the Polywog Symbiote. Uh, partly hoping that maybe we can find a Ranger's Guile. Mana Geode. Okay, well, instead, let's find a Gem Razor deck. <laughs> That's, that would be better. Uh, but we failed. This is interesting because we could play a Polywog here. That's a little scary, though. I'm not going to. Because I feel like if we did that and then played a Great Horn, like, we could get in a weird spot where maybe... They end up having, like, a Shadow of the Sky or something, and then they just end poorly for us. So we don't want to do that just yet. Especially when we're set up for even, like, a Sterix next turn or something. Yep, there's a Shatter. Just like we were worried about. Alright, at the very least, we've now gotten a lot of cards out of the way. Have been bad draws, but uh, should be a little better. I mean, they could just have another. But at this point, we've drawn and discarded a couple things and gotten stuff out of the yard. I mean... I mean, out of the deck. So we should be hitting more live cards here, hopefully. And most of the creatures are mutate creatures. We're actually in a situation where we've even gone through a couple of these symbiotes, so why not? Come on, Gym Razor. So we don't have to find out what those things are doing. Alright. Ugh, you are not a Gym Razor deck. Come on, come on. Uh-oh, they're checking their mana. That's not good. Seven. I guess we're just going to be looking at an Ugin next turn. What's going on here? I mean, don't know what else. I mean, I'm assuming that's what it is. Nope, they're just putting Karuga in hand. Interesting. And playing Karuga. Okay. So I'll get to draw some cards. Oh, no. Wow. We've just had too many situations where we've just still drawn land when we just didn't need it. Yep. Simulacrum. Works. So it's like a mono-white artifact deck using Karuga as a draw spell? I think I'm understanding that correctly.
Banner calling green? Okay. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Well, I'm going to assume they're not wiping the board again here. If they are, we just die. All right, this should bring the game to a close. I advise that my allies are counting on me. They're thinking real hard. Oh, they got a Parhelion. Oh, I'm not even going to concede because I want our opponent to kill us with that. That's what I want to happen here. That, that... I'm, I'm jealous. Honestly, I am genuinely jealous. I have never gotten to cast that in a game, and I've so badly wanted to. This is why, like, I wish I could just talk to my opponent and be like, Hey, can you send me your deck list? Because I would play just for that play, honestly. I'm not even bothered that we just drew all this mana. Like, we're going to die to the aliens from, or the aliens, <laughs> the angels from the Parhelion. Oh yeah, you're way too late, Sterix. You you are beyond late at this point. I mean, we're gonna do our thing because we have to, but I mean, not really much we're hoping to draw here. No, sure shock though. That's a thing. That's a real thing. Hold the phone. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. All our, I was going to say, more Shore Sharks came into play. I had rather have been in my hand. Um, all right. Here's what we can do. I mean, they're going to have to tap something to crew this. So we could actually bounce that. Get more things with the Sterics and maybe actually still win next turn, the following turn, depending on what comes off the top of the deck. What does this thing have? It's got First Strike, Vigilance, Flying, and it makes two Angel tokens with Flying and Vigilance. Okay. And it's a 5-5 five five itself. Alright, end the turn. And now with this other Polywag in play, we have enough mana to do this and still protect it with the Ranger's Guile. So that was kind of an interesting, uh, convenient set of cards that came up from the Sterix. I think we gotta let it resolve. Alright, the opponent wants to come after probably our Sterix, I'd imagine. We are going to... Make sure my mass, right? Four, minus one. And we have a polywender, so minus two. All right. We'll give it hexproof. Keep it from getting eaten. Who's jumping into the Parhelion? Man, the opponent's deck is wild. I've seen some other white and artifact lists that were playing Karn, but this is kind of interesting. This is scary. I wonder if the opponent's trying to just get it done here in one big attack step. What are they? They've got six. You'd have to spend at least two to crew the Parhelion. That's 11. But that, the 33 doesn't have haste. Like, you can't, I don't think there's a way they could kill us this turn. Enter battlefield, you control two or more non-land, non-token permanents with the same name as one another. Create a 4-4 construct. All right, so they're gonna make a four four. Seems reasonable. 
Man, this is like deep cuts on artifact creatures. They opted not to attack. Alright, so we got a Shore Shark, I think. Pro uh, this is bad, though, because we don't... Uh, we, we, we need something to discard in case we find something we want. So we actually have to just let it ride. Alright, Heroic Intervention's pretty good. But let's see what else we find. Ooh, Lord Dracus. What do we have in the yard? Ranger Skiles. Eh, probably not the best thing, but it is something that mutates, and we can just get that back. Ooh, another Sterix. Sorry, Lord Dracus, you gotta go. Under. Let's bounce a token. Man, none of these are great to bounce, actually. <laughs> Bonnet actually has us in a pretty good spot. Uh, let's get rid of the token because it just goes away. Uh, let's search for a land. Oh, well, there goes our last shore shark. Turn target creature to its owner's hand. Take action. Get counters, gain life. We're going to play another Sterics. I'm just wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do it. This is what we're here for, right? <gasps> no! Well, I got the lovely Lost Connection. I haven't had that happen in forever. What a way to end these games. Just when we're about to do something big and awesome. Alright, well we got back in pretty quick. Uh, let's see what all those triggers are that we had coming. Whenever this creature mutates, you return target creature. Let's return a Palladium Mirror. Because this gives them cards. This gets them another land. This gets, lets them kill something. We don't want any of those options, obviously. Uh, tapped. I only have 21 cards left, so at some point we're going to have to just start fighting. So if we attack with our 12-12 <laughs> and a 4-3, opponent would have to block with 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So you'd have to block at least with those three. We'd get to kill 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Get to kill them both. We would lose our big stack, which is quite the stack. But we then have everything else, and we got a gem razor we could start putting stuff on. I mean, Karn turn. Yeah, I mean, I guess this is what we do. I can't imagine why not. I mean, blocking with the attacking with those doesn't do anything here. We can just set up a big attack next turn. Because that's 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 28. Yeah, this is, this is a lot. And we have 16 cards left. We have seen two of our Sterix, all of our Shore Sharks, one Gym Razor, two Migratory Great Horns. So we, st we still have a few things left. We've got a few few tricks. 
I thought the opponent might actually tap some things and, and jump into the Parhelion there, but uh, they didn't. Alright, so we'll kill Karuga first. We will kill this 4-4. Four, four. Actually, I guess we have to kill them all, right? 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, no, we don't. We don't. So let's kill those in that order. You can keep a 2-2. Two, two. We're okay with that. They'll go to 11, and then they have to have a sicko turn to not die. We're at 30, though, so we have time. The problem is, if they wipe out our board here, though, we don't have much left. I mean, we have gym razors and great horns. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what's left Evil at this stage. All right, that's an 8-8. Help us conquer death. You can remove a great horn, sure. Attack with Parhelion, make two angels. That gives you two blockers, right? So that'd be four total. Block our four biggest things. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They'd be at one. I mean, that's that's a legit thing. I mean, granted, if we draw a mutate thing, we just stick it on the gem razor, and then that sort of changes the whole equation, but still, it's what they got to do. I mean, Parhelion and, and Karn's kind of sweet, truthfully. You've got Vigilance, opponent. Why don't you attack? I only have a great gem razor that can block. Which isn't worth it. I mean, because Karn only makes him a creature till end of turn, right? Oh, until your next turn. So that actually is a problem. Yeah, if they attack, that could be bad. Okay, banner. Calling white, I assume. Green. Why green? You're about to make white angels. That's strange. Oh, we have Lord Rakus left too, don't we? Forgot about that. Well, we have one Lord Rakus left. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we have 8 lands left. So we're like 50-50 on live spells. <laughs> Oh, boy. All right, so what happens if we attack with everything? They block, block, block. Take 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14? Even if they remove another, if they take 10, but then they lose everything but the Parhelion? Okay. I mean, I guess this is what we do. I don't know. This feels like this is going to end poorly, but we attack anyway. I mean, those are the blocks. I mean, they have two mana available. With one card. Nope, we're moving to attack. That's our damage. That should be it. Man, that was... An interesting set of games. That last one was pretty exciting, honestly. I got to see some cards I don't see that often. As far as my recommendation on this one, I'm not sure. I think if you if you are trying to manage your resources and your wild cards, this is a reasonable deck to play. The only things I would change particularly is I would probably cut one of the protection spells. Uh, what's probably going to end up being 
one ranger's guile and then i cut one other creature i have to go back and look and a land and then probably play like one some combination of three sea dasher octopus and the everquill phoenix i think that's what i'm going to look to do so it may be two and one one way or the other but i think that gives you a chance at an evasive thing another flash creature you can play which is good when you need to trigger something uh, also the ability to draw cards which is good but i think that's what this deck is missing not not the card drawing but some extra ways to target things when you need to to or even go hunt for cards potentially so i think that's where we're at on this list i think if i just tweak the dials a little bit it could still be playable and again if you're looking for something that's rotation proof you're trying to limit the use of your wild cards this is a deck you can play and actually is reasonable now would i say i would hop right in and think it's going to ladder hard probably not uh, but your protection spells do give you a little bit of action so it's something worth considering but it is actually a playable deck it is viable uh, it can beat some things but i do think you need to give yourself the best shot with those uh updates for sure and like i said it's not necessarily a ladder killer you know you can have some fun you'll probably go like 50 50. you know you if you can get a little streak or maybe you get a hot situation where you're drawing a lot of the shore sharks then maybe but otherwise it's going to be pretty tough in some of those matches so it's just something to think about but if you're just playing for fun, want to mess with some cards, like I said, you want something that you can maybe play in the best of one cues and not have to worry about stuff going away post-rotation, hmm, give it a look. Uh, you may have to make some concessions on your lands, you know, just whatever other multicolor lands there are. But otherwise, give it a shot. It's worth playing. Anyway, again, I want to say thanks to Hello Good Games just for giving us the concept and putting it out in the world and us just playing an upgraded version of it seeing how things went and remember if you like this video please hit the like button and remember to hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell because that helps out a bunch but that's all i have for you for now we'll see you next time